flags one more time for the fun because it's amazing okay really nice here look at that man the wombo combo man so beautiful Hello everyone, my name is Rumat and today we will continue our saga on top lane. I am Grandmaster at around 50 LP, well technically master because only tomorrow I'm gonna get pushed. I have a huge win rate on Talia top and I believe I want to make another video for it because it is the, the thing that I really like to play right now and in my opinion I can do best on Talia this way so that's why I'm playing solo queue mostly on top. Uh, on Talia. Now, I promise you, I'm going to make Talia mid and jungle videos, maybe even support or bot, but those are going to be most likely in flex or when I'm field in solo queue, because when you're field in solo queue, you're probably against other field players on bot or on mid, and I believe I have a nicer time there. But generally, right now, I like to play her on top lane, because as you see, I can actually do generally fine. If you're looking on my OPGG, I have some games uh, in which... I like have I have like four games in the past eight in which I have scores like 12-0, 14-2, 9-0. This one included this one is the 12-0 game, and that's why I chose to showcase it in this replay. It's going to be a replay because as you've seen in the past, my laptop does not really handle easily the live plays that I do. I mean not live in that way, but when I'm filming myself playing so we're going to do a guide on how i play this by the replay i'm gonna do those kind of videos as well and i promise you i'm going to do mid and jungle but as you can see i don't really have that much time to to do so many videos as before and it's understandable you might not like it but i really can't push the time the extra time in this in my life so i'm trying to do my best at two three videos per week now uh, currently for this game I'm doing with the Yasuo and we're doing a technique in champ select where practically the enemy sees that I'm picking Talia top, uh, Talia sorry, and they think I'm either jungle or mid and he picks Yasuo and okay they think Yasuo is top. We showcase ourselves to the towers and then we swap, he goes mid, I go top and this is a nice thing mainly because if the enemy swaps, so if the Maokai comes mid and the Oriana goes top, most top laners don't know how to play mid, and most mid laners, mid laners does know, do not know how to play top. And the good thing about this is the fact that Oriana generally plays with magic resist, not this game, but she went for armor, and this guy generally plays with armor. As you can see, he went for armor here, and he's going to be against me, Talia. And as I said before, Talia top works mainly because, well, works better than mid and jungle, in my opinion, mainly because in jungle and in mid you get to meet people that can kill you so much more easily. On top lane it's much more easily to defer ganks, and uh, you can survive much simpler because there is lots of room to kite, you can escape simpler. Here, if the mid laner is an assassin and the jungler is something with a stun, you don't really have that much time to escape. On here though, you generally have uh, a word here or here and you expect the jungler to come at level 3 or 4. Now, it's simpler because there aren't so many ways to get ganked, so that's why I prefer playing top. Also, you'll see I generally am able in this kind of videos to 1 versus 1 the enemy top laner and to kill him. And being against the Maokai, being against the Set, being against the Jax, a Riven, Camille, everything isn't that hard because most of them play with Teleport and they don't really expect Talia to go top with Ignite. Now, if you're against a top laner with Ignite, that becomes a skill battle, but again, it's more simple than on mid lane because on mid lane, most champions can destroy you, not on top. Now, for this video, I'm going to showcase you the runes again, the builds. Now, that's, let's do that quick. Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, Cup the Grace, and Magic Resist because because I'm against Rakan, Oriana and Maokai, and Maokai specifically deals AP damage and it's fine. Also I'm going for GLP, and after that Sork Shoes, stuff like that, Orb, maybe Morello to be more tanky, maybe Lyandris or Rabidons after that, you'd want uh, Rabidons sometimes. Now when you start on top, you'd rather check the blue, uh, or the red, based on where you start, but don't die, don't get randomly caught, so just check it at the 130, so you don't instantly get gipped by the enemy, so don't check it here, so from the right from the dark or when you're top side just check it from this bush and or come here to look at it but don't word don't waste the word be careful and don't don't try to do much you can't really one versus to them now when i'm playing to lia top early on i do a simple thing i try to get cues down onto the enemy after the first wave and the second wave i try to get q down on them to push them back 
to get the early kills on them. Now, most of the time, I managed to push the wave till here and to also poke the enemy top laner. In this case, I might not get him low enough, but I will kill him later, you'll see. And I generally like to push the wave till here because, as you can see, I'm going like this and I try to get the full Q onto the enemy top laner, make him lose CS, as you can see right here. I'm, just trying, I'm trying to be heavily annoying. As you can see, he's already half HP and most of them won't use their teleport and most of them will breathe out. This is the Diamond 1 player, I think, so I'm at 50 LP in Master, it seems uh, I'm not yet against Grandmasters, but I can beat them, I've been I've been against a Grandmaster set with 70% win rate and I've did, I've done fine. Now, whenever you play Tilia top, your goal is to not get surprised by the enemy jungler, that's one, and second goal is to not get killed by the enemy top laner, because if either of those happens, you have Ignite and not, you don't have Teleport, and that means you're going to have a harder time. Now. You can uh, know, you can know that where the enemy jungler is by wording here. That's the first thing because most of them won't come by the river. And also, if your mid laner is kind enough, you're going to have a word here. And in most cases, having a word here and having a word here, the only path Graves, Kindred, Kazakhs can take is this. But they won't because they don't really know that it's not worth it most of the time. So we know now. See, we we now know that Kindred is here because my top my mid laner told me that Oriana went to the bot side to bait him. So it means that he's about to get ganked, which in all fairness is just gonna happen in a second, right here. And so if I see Kindred mid at this point, it means I have free time to abuse this top laner. As you can see, I have already six CS advantage, and this guy doesn't use his teleport. That's the mistake. If you would try to use his teleport, I would just back off. But at this point, we know that this fight is starting here. This is going to happen. So it means Maoka is going to start following. I follow him. And guess what's about to happen? Well, I'm catching him. I'm flashing. I'm igniting. He doesn't have time to react. Because I already did my entire combo. And bam, he's dead. Bam, he's dead. That's the advantage that you took here. And also, you created something so strong. He's already in so much... Uh, how can I say? He's already behind, okay? He used his teleport. He used his flash. I used those both too, and now I see him here, and also my jungler is here, I'm pinging, let's gank him. But he was aware of it because of the word, if there was no word, he wouldn't have time to react for this. But it's fine, we still we still managed to damage him, not to get the kill as far as I remember, yep. But to push him back, and at this point, look at him, look at him, how low HP it is, right? So this gives me a lot of opportunity to be careful on this stuff. Now, what I know here for sure, is that Kindred might come. I don't really have enough to fight Kindred, but I also know Maoka is far away, so if Kindred comes, I could just Q her and back off towards this zone. I would get here probably till Kindred slow would help Maokai reach me, but that wouldn't be still enough. Maokai would still lose the entire wave here. He would still lose the entire wave if Kindred decides to gank and chase, right? So we also see, we don't see Kindred here, but then again, I'm going into the bush right here to be careful of the enemy jungler. If you die, again, I repeat, if you die to the enemy jungler using this, you're pretty much gone. Every time you play top laner with Ignite, you're pretty much gone. Now, I know I have no mana, so I stay back here, I try to not waste time. I don't go back generally till I have uh, the item, uh, the book, the lost chapter. Also, bot lane does pretty fine. And I'm trying to be annoying. I'm not using my mana here, as you can see. I'm trying just to poke, 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 auto attacks, poke. Do not do anything else. If he wants to jump on you, fine. You're probably going to kill him. But generally, after I use my ignite and get the kill, I try to not force anything till I have ignite next time. Because when you have ignite, it's much more simple to get the kill on the opponent. It's so simple, actually. Compared to the alternative of fighting him in his grounds, meaning he doesn't have teleport, I don't have ignite, it's fair for him. It's very fair, and most of the time he will come back in CS when they teleport, if they are smart enough. This time does, does not, it doesn't happen because I position the wave slightly better than him, and so I have a, a advantage in that. Now, I started to ping when I see my Zac around this way, I started to ping to come game talk because I know he has no flash. This is a free kill. I could even probably get a free kill on him, but why force it? Why force it when I know I will win 2 versus 2, when I know my ignite comes up in 20 seconds? I have no reason to grid out, I have no reason to force it, the game is going in my way, it, go it goes the good way, and even if Kindred ganks here, I have time to react with ult, I have time to run away, and I have time to bait for Zac. Kindred went here, she takes that, and also I'm waiting patiently here for the Zac that you'll see. I pinged him for a while, I'm not flaming, I'm just doing some rare awaiting assistance pings, and that's 
more than enough for your jungler to understand mainly what you want. Especially if you have a jungler that is nowhere to be seen by the enemy jungler and has some sort of soft CC. Now, it doesn't matter what happens here if he stuns. If he gets the stun up, I'm having a free kill. And guess what's about to happen? He starts to channel it. Full combo. Doesn't matter that I don't hit it. I have ignite. I know there is no way he can escape. So we just chase him down. And now look. Look at this entire wave right here. It's all about these waves. He loses so much CS. He gets behind. I simply just push it now. This guy goes towards uh, the Kindred. I ping that I have ult up to help him. Okay. And now we just push. And now we got so much advantage. It's actually painful. We also get a plate here. We back off. And I'm going to show you what I'm buying here exactly. I'm just backing off further away. Because we don't want to risk giving gold to the uh, Kindred. Okay, so I'm starting right with the Lost Chapter and a Revolver. As I said, we're going for GLP. As you can see, uh, my team is doing pretty fine here as well. Even though I start to ping like a maniac that uh, Maokai comes and they understand. Also, uh, Zack, I think, into here a bit because uh, Oriana flashes. But I don't think he dies. I'm not sure. He... Yeah, he escaped. It's fine. It's fine. He didn't hit. Alright, so normally when you got your first recall and you got some kills like this, like this difference, like 16... 18 uh, CS difference to zero. He also went for magic resist. Normally you can even try to swap if you're playing with the duo as I do the strategies to swap when the enemy builds magic resist because he can actually pierce through it. I, I can kill the opponent and it's all fine. But also a strategy that's viable when you play Tlia top at this point, even if you don't have ignite. Let's say that Maokai did this kind of from here. So the wave basically resets. You may lose some CS but you can go straight bot. When I spawned here I could go straight bot if it would have been an opportunity and also if they have maybe an engage support. I would have gone to till here because I know they have no words, right? It's a small chance that this is worth it by them. And so we go here and then we just ult and get kills. Even though even though Maokai will get to push towards this tower, if we manage to do the 3 versus 2 or 3 versus 3 against the enemy jungler, because you also seen that she used her ult, we would have gained so much. Now it's a choice here. You can risk going here and get kills, that's a risk, or you can go safely to top and you can keep killing the opponent. That's also an option because you know that your bot lane does fine and you know that you don't have to risk it. Now, if my bot lane would have been 0-2, that would have been way more risky because you generally have to play on the winning lane. So I would have had to play on mid and top because my bot lane is now behind and also because my bot lane has an enchanter, let's say in the case that they are 0-2, I would have a harder time engaging because I don't have an engage support. If I would have an engage support and I would see that there are chances to gank this, I would try to gank, but we're moving towards top for this case because it's uh, not that of a use to me. Also we have a Caitlyn, we know she scales. Now most of the time when I have a jungler that has no mana, I will do the deeds and steal the blue buff because I really enjoy having a blue buff. And then I move towards mid lane as you can see here because Maokai started to build magic resist. Right, so we start to push this, we get another wave. We are second in CS after Xayah. Well technically we are first with Xayah and Yasuo in CS so that's fine. We also are careful. I hit a full combo there. I am not risking anything. I know that she ulted. She, uh, I know that she would have ulted here and killed me. So I flashed instantly. Why? Because I have a bounty and we don't want to die this game because the bounties aren't that good to the opponent. The bounty is never good unless you get two kills to make up for it. Now Yasuo is doing fine on top. I also see here a start of gank. As you can see, Zack is doing a perfect, perfect combo. Well, I missed the, I missed the W, but it's not a problem because, uh, as you can see, we still got the kill. Now, uh, I see what's happening onto the mid. I can go and take this plate. I am not risking anything, so I'm keeping the distance onto the Kindred. I'm pushing this lane. As you can see here, I'm getting all the plates in the world. As you can see, I'm 84 CS. I got the MVP for this game and the next one, by the way. I'm 84 CS, 3-0. Uh, and you'll see I have 70% kill participation for this game. I will be everywhere and I am doing the job that the Leah top may has to do. Also now because you can see we are getting a free herald with my top laner and we're both playing pretty pretty good. We're trying to get here a kill on Maokai if he comes but I decide to recall. Why? Let's see because I will have enough gold for GLP. I will probably miss part of a wave. I also got um, Sork shoes and a tome. Here I'm going to start to move towards bot because I see Maokai here and by seeing Maokai here it means that we could probably get something out of it and he failed his flash. We got him easily. 
and I also noticed that they are doing Drake even though we have no words I noticed it here I would have jumped on that side but I was quite scared that they would have to seal well you know died we could almost steal it but it's uh, not that well not that good but we could still move around we could still fight here Lulu into the bit I lost some waves I didn't gain that much here by just by the mock I kill but what you're going to see is that Yasuo is coming from top lane and we can get the kill either on Kindred or here onto the Rakan. Now he chose the Rakan because that's a sure kill and we would have been cornered by the enemy team here as you can see. Still on the recall I got the GLP, Sork Shoes and the Tome but you're going to notice, I'm not sure if this game or the other, that I'm generally buying the most vision words in team even more than support sometimes because I believe that's a very strong thing to do. Now here I could have used W at this engage to push Kindred away, well we still get the kills on both of them but I could have uh, pushed Kindred away from her ult I mean. So we're moving here, we're doing fine, we're getting more plates and already on top lane we got two towers we are destroying this and we are making a huge huge oh yeah right sorry i forgot about this one it's amazing this one so we see zach being here they have no words we see lulu being prepared here also talia we know this engage is going to happen but we didn't know how well it's going to happen so we have zach jumping bam instant full combo on two people okay get the kill onto the Xayah, get the kill onto the Rakan, sorry for the lags, it seems that I still have lags, one more time for the fun, because it's amazing, okay, really nice here, look at that man, the wombo combo man, so beautiful, also, yeah, this is pretty much done, the game is pretty much over, I'm 604, 10 kills out of 14 participation for a top laner, how often you see top laners playing the game at this uh, roaming level? Very rarely and most likely if they are a pantheon or something uh, with uh, roaming capabilities. Very rarely you see top laners having lots of roams and lots of ganks. But this is also due to the part that I roamed uh, and also we swapped. Here I get the... the I, I'm not even sure how I got the kill. I think I hit the Gromp and Gromp hit her and that's how I got the kill. Seeing the full build here, you can see I'm going for orb straight into a blasting wound into two vision words. Vision words are extremely, extremely important. I clear here the jungle because we don't want to be behind in CS. I get here enormous advantage from this. I am 100% the first person in gold in this game and I did full clear from the Zac. And then I move towards more aggressive stuff. As you can see, I have two vision words and I'm Talia, that's fed. I did this to check this bush. I've put a vision word here to be sure. I've moved around and I've been careful enough. I got here. I did not know that word, but then again, Maokai found me. So I had to bolt out. Now they did this and because they are so behind, I was very far away from dying. And you'll see Rakan now trolling a bit like running around from the map. And yeah, we still get the kill on Maokai, but this guy just gave up. And as you can see, I'm chasing here, here, but I don't think I'm gonna get him. Oh yeah, you know why I'm not gonna get him? Because of this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, right? And so, I'm not even sure. I'm gonna speed it up because game is over by this point. But you might ask, well, what you gonna do in the case where you have a scaling jungler or a CC less jungler? Well... I most of the time don't even rely on my jungler. Most of the time when I have a jungler that I know it's not something like Zac with an easy to hit CC, so maybe an early cane or stuff like that, or a Kha'Zix, I'm trying to be careful. I'm not trying to play with my jungler or Leon. I'm trying to kill the enemy top laner, run away from the enemy jungler, or kill one of those in a penny combination, but never get killed without getting something and never dying randomly to the enemy gank combination so jungler to stop laner now normally i ban darius and if i'm against something like irelia or something annoying that i really need to run away from my kill away or mordekaiser i might go for face rush also we can see here maokai just getting destroyed so basically this works great into tanks into non-top laner top laners well technically teemo doesn't count but you get the point it works well into most stuff, but there are some picks, some difficult picks that are difficult on mid lane as well. I would vouch for maybe 
yeah, Irelia may be the hardest. A good Irelia may be the hardest, because against Darius you might die once, but if you play with Phase Rush you might have chances of escaping. Okay, this is a, a, a good flash here. Now, that's the thing. If you are against those champions, if you are against the Darius with Flash and Ghost, I would say you might struggle, but if you play with Phase Rush and Ignite, you might still get kills off him if you're careful. And after level 6, uh, Camille, Irelia, Riven, everyone in this... Uh, in this category might kill you if you're not careful you have to do stuff pre-level 6 because Talia is a strong early game champion so into the mid to late game if you're not ahead as you know that it happens on mid lane most of the time because it's hard to get kills or roams then you're gonna struggle but if you roam from top lane on bot lane rarely the enemy top laner will follow because they will use teleport because they have used teleport because you push them away so it's kind of interesting, an interesting dynamic here, and it changes a bit the top laner with teleport versus top laner with teleport dynamic, right? So it's it's quite interesting. I will make more videos for you to grasp this if you want to try. I'm not saying it's the best thing, maybe, but I'm saying it's kind of simpler to play than mid and jungle, because on jungle you are facing Kha'Zix and Rengars and Olafs or Elise and champions that are very difficult to play against and this Maokai okay, ints at this point and here we just make Rakan disappear and so I believe you understand my point now by these two videos I really believe you start to understand my point I'm 11-0 we're chasing Kindred around the map she's gone in two seconds I don't think she even has time to react because of the polymorph and now we're just gonna finish the game but this was the tutorial guys i really hope you find this useful i really hope you practice what i tell you because i have lots of jungle and mid videos and i see sometimes people that are getting disappointed by the fact that Lia is too hard to play and i'm not judging i'm not saying that you're bad the champion is difficult you might be good on other champions as i am on other champions i climbed first time to grandmaster mainly with pantheon not with tulia mid i also climbed to diamond one europe west with tulia mid but it was a different uh, season last season i'm curious though with the new season what the changes will be for tulia and maybe she gets to be strong on the, onto the mid lane again but for now also they surrendered for now i believe the strongest tulia is either on bot where you play with the support but on bot you don't have that much impact or on, on top lane because that's what i play and that's what i find her useful in and i believe a lot of people will agree with me because there is a surprise factor that Tia had when she was released on mid lane or when she appeared in the jungle the surprise factor lasts a lot now i don't think i will create a new meta with it because i still have to play a lot to grasp everything but i think that would be a starting point for some players but even if you play it, you gotta practice a lot and you gotta try to do what I do because if your macro level or micro level lacks in some contexts, well, that's some kind of rain. If your macro and micro levels lack and you find yourself dying a lot to a Raven, Camille, or Jax early on, you're not really doing what you're having, what the right thing. Well, if you're against the team or queen, something ranged, Tilia is a pretty good pick into that. If you're against anything else that's not S tier meta, if you're not against Darius Mordekaiser, you are doing fine possibly, and most of the time they are also banned. I ban permanently Darius on top. Irela is also hard to play against, but rarely you see good Irelas. Jax with teleport isn't hard to beat. Jax with ignite might be difficult. Camille with teleport isn't hard to beat. But again, you have to be careful to her ult after six. Malphite is decent. Maokai is decent. I've beat these kind of champions. But I'm doing fine right now, and we're going to see what's next in store for us i really like the guy the fact that you guys uh, received so well the last video and i will promise i will make more videos for mid and jungles uh kind of apologize because i started this, this channel for mid and jungle and i kind of transitioned to top lane and some of you might not like that but i guess if i can climb here i will not stop climbing with this i'm drew Mutt, and i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial guys i love you so much goodbye